It's a real pleasure to be here on the traditional territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh people to have uh, what is the first of its kind, which is an early learning summit sponsored by the Ministry of Education. This is something we've... <clears throat> This is something we've never done before, and uh, judging by the size of the room, it's something that was long, long overdue. Uh, and I think we have 225 people here registered from every part of the province uh, to participate here today and exchange ideas. And uh, indeed, it is very exciting to get the kinds of experiences that people have in this room together under one roof, to have a conversation that's long overdue, to look at the government's initiatives over many fronts on expansion of childcare, uh, and to see what more we can do. Uh, there are indeed uh, partnerships that haven't even been formed yet uh, right here in this room. There are best practices that we aren't aware of between each other. And when you get peers and committed, passionate people together like we're doing today, I think the future of early learning is in very good hands. So I want to thank all of you for taking the time uh, to be here today. And I'm really, really pleased. Uh, to be joined by my colleagues, uh, the Minister of Children and Family Development, Katrina Conroy, is here. You can clap for her. <laughs> and my colleague, the Minister of State for Child Care, Katrina Chen, is here. And they are part of our matrilinealish uh, cabinet. Uh, um, Listen, one of the reasons that we're here is, a, is something that we've been talking about for a long time in the education system. Um, a statistic, I suppose, but a, a reality that is very uh, sad and stark. Uh, when children come into kindergarten for the first time, when they start their learning careers, they are assessed, of course, by professional teachers. And we know that in British Columbia for a long, long time, a, approximately a third, it goes up and down a few percentage points uh, each and every year, but about a third of them, uh, score on the vulnerability index uh, that, uh, that we have uh, established here in British Columbia on, a, on at least one or more vulnerability indexes. And what that, of course, means is that children in British Columbia, from the very first day they set foot in a school, uh, are at a disadvantage uh, to, some of their per to some of their peers. And that's why uh, we're so focused on looking at how we can uh, make that situation much, much better for many, many more families and kids uh, in British Columbia, and we know that we're backed by very strong research. We'll hear a lot of that today uh, about uh, the benefits of aligning childcare with the school system. Uh, we know it improves, for example, uh, through academic research, uh, a child's future academic success. We know it improves uh, social outcomes. And we also know that it's, uh, it is critical to a high-performing, prosperous economy to have children doing their very best and succeeding in their school careers from the earliest age possible. So we'll hear today about the return on investment to the economy when early learning experiences are of high quality, and we'll hear that from Craig Alexander and other economists who will share their perspectives and their research on jurisdictions right around the world. And, uh, and it is instructive for us here in British Columbia uh, to, uh, to make those arguments uh, all throughout society as to why this is the best investment, not just in the, the fairness and the, and the justice of helping children do well, uh, but in the benefits that all of us get as a society and as, a, as an economy. Our government is committed to investing in childcare. You've seen that. We have a billion dollar plan. The very, one of the very first budget items we introduced as a government uh, was around improving in quality, uh, improving quality, I should say, expanding spaces and increasing affordability to ensure that childcare is accessible for families in British Columbia. The ministry will continue to offer successful programs that we have, like Ready, Set, Learn and Strong Start BC. Uh, we're making sure that uh, education professionals and parents and caregivers have the knowledge required to support kids as they move forward in their K-12 studies to reach their full potential. And I'm really excited about the work uh, that has been done around the early learning framework, something that very many of you in this room uh, were a critically key part of uh, helping uh, government achieve. Uh, of course, this document was originally uh, published uh, over 10 years ago now. Uh, it was groundbreaking at the time. It helped change uh, early years practice in BC. It offered guidance and support to education professionals and families and caregivers who were involved in the early learning programs at that time. But the newly revised uh, framework establishes a vision that I think will, that is much more forward-looking 
uh, for early care and learning in British Columbia. And of course, I think many of you have the document before you. Uh, it advocates for the importance of development and learning of young children, zero to eight years of age in learning environments, whether they're Strong Start BC programs or primary classrooms uh, or childcare settings, preschools and other early childhood development and child health programs. And it guides early learning programs and activities and encourages discussions with families about their child's early learning and it shapes professional development in British Columbia. The framework was revised, uh, of course, in response to the changes that we see in British Columbia, economic, social, and uh, cultural changes uh, in our province that had, in a way, stale dated the previous iteration uh, of the framework. Now we have new perspectives that are long overdue uh, in the framework, new tools, new resources to help young learners be successful. And I have to say again, I'm grateful there were 600 early child care and education stakeholders, including the BC Teachers Federation, including members of the Early Learning Framework Advisory Committee, uh, including Indigenous partners, the First Nations Education Steering Committee, Métis Nation BC, and the BC Aboriginal Child Care Society, who contributed tremendously to the development of the new framework. So thank you to each and every one of you who gave you your time and your expertise and knowledge to get that document completed. You deserve the recognition for it, and because of your hard work, the framework is now aligned with the K-12 education curriculum. It's now a focus on children zero to eight, not just zero to five for the first time. And importantly, it uh, aligns with government and Canada's obligation uh, on reconciliation by integrating indigenous perspectives and worldviews, as well as critical uh, principles of inclusion to support children with special needs throughout from the earliest age right through their school careers. And the document supports professional learning for early learning professionals while expanding supports for families of young children. We're receiving already national and international attention uh, for the framework. It's making a positive difference in the lives of our province's early learners. So today, in addition to discussing the framework, we're also gonna be discussing and engaging you, with you to see what you think about our government's plan regarding new before and after school care options on school grounds throughout British Columbia. And I see a lot of my colleagues uh, from administration and uh, elected office uh, at uh, in BC's uh, 60 school districts here. Uh, this is part of government's movement towards a universal childcare system and the ways that we're looking at providing more access to quality before and after school care that is affordable for families in British Columbia. So we're creating a policy framework that enables boards of education to operate before and after school directly or through a licensed partner that will protect spaces that are funded to provide childcare and supports partnership agreements to emerge with operators. <clears throat> if I can put it like this, it's time to move beyond childcare operators on school grounds of which we have uh, a satellite and a constellation of wonderful operators in British Columbia, but it's time to move beyond this being a landlord-tenant relationship. And it's time to move this towards a complete education community uh, in our school system. Uh, now, there are some other resources that I want to remind people of that are uh, having an effect in British Columbia. We have a $2.7 billion uh, capital plan over the next three years <clears throat> in, the, in the Ministry of Education. Shovels are literally in the ground on 76 projects now around British Columbia. This is historic. This is, we are building at a record pace. Uh, schools and additions uh, right across British Columbia. Uh, many of these new buildings will have neighborhood learning centers and almost all of them dedicate that space uh, towards early childhood education and childcare spaces. Hundreds of spaces are literally under construction right now with shovels in the ground. In addition, the Ministry of Children and Family Development has already created 1,100 seats in schools through their capital program fund with thousands more uh, on the way in the, in the plan that, uh, that is before government. We know that it's important to have childcare on school grounds. Of course, it's incredibly convenient for parents who have older siblings and can, their family can start this, the day the same way in the same place. Uh, we can eliminate long distances that are sometimes traveled for uh, after school uh, services, uh, but we do want to make sure that we get this right. 
So before we scale up and expand uh, before and after school programs, we want to hear from you, from school districts, from education partner groups, and from child care operators about how we best do that. Uh, it's always best to avoid mistakes before they happen, and it's always best to seek wide counsel uh, on, uh, on what those best practices look like. So we're here to learn from one another, and certainly government is here to learn from you today. Uh, and uh, it's a tremendous opportunity for me as the Minister of Education to learn more about what you think about the proposed uh, partnership model. Now, I'm also very pleased this morning to make a, uh, a funding announcement uh, around uh, getting things started uh, and uh, scaling up the efforts around uh, uh, child care services as they're connected to the school system. So this morning, I'm very, very pleased to, ha to, to announce on behalf of Premier Horgan and on behalf of my colleagues that we're investing $1.28 million to support three early learning projects that will enable school districts to better support educators to help improve the social, emotional, and learning outcomes for children from birth to age eight. And to support the implementation of the new BC Early Learning Framework, grants will go out to all public school districts to support early learning educators at Strong Start BC centers and elementary schools to participate in early learning professional development activities. In addition, the funding is going to support district capacity building through two early learning programs. Grants will be distributed to 47 school districts particip participating in the Changing Results for Young Children and the 12 districts that are participating in the Strengthening Early Years to Kindergarten Transitions programs. The United Way of the Lower Mainland will also receive a grant as part of its involvement in Changing Results for Young Children. That program sees school districts, local communities, and the United Way partner to offer learning opportunities for education professionals to support social, emotional, and learning outcomes for young kids in childcare and, and school settings. The Strengthening Early Years to Kindergarten Transition Program is focused on helping school districts develop guidelines, models, and partnerships with their local communities to ensure kids and families experience smooth transitions from early years to kindergarten. Again, this is getting at the heart of the problem I mentioned uh, at the beginning of my remarks. We can't forget about those kids who are showing up in school in kindergarten and are already falling behind on day one of their school careers. And that's what this is about today, is strengthening the partnerships to ensure that kids are supported to the best extent possible uh, in a province like ours. And that's what we want to talk to you about today. So thank you for your time, for your energy, for your dedication to high quality early learning in British Columbia. And uh, I look forward to the discussions today and thank all the presenters, some of whom have come a very long way indeed and uh, have a great summit today. Thank you very much.